welcome. It's good to see everyone. Good to have you with us in this worship service. And I ask that you bow, our, bow your heads with us as we have our opening prayer. Gracious Father, we are blessed to be here today, to be in your presence, to bring glory and praise to your name, to exalt your holy and righteous name, Father. Scripture tells us that every good thing and every perfect gift comes from the Father above, the Father of lights. That is you. You are the creator. And all that we have is from your hand. And we thank you and we praise you and ask your blessings upon this worship service. Pray that you be with us as we take part in it and that you will be, you will be with, with all those who are watching this that they too may receive a blessing from the hand of their Lord, their God, and their creator. We thank you, Father. We praise you, exalt you. We ask your spirit to be here and with each one at home. And we ask this in Jesus' glorious and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are so thankful to be here today. We're thankful that these young adults have show up to praise God. So please praise God with us. We thank our God for our pastor, Pastor Reiner. And we thank God that each one of you are able to be with us. So enjoy our service as we praise God. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together. Even if it's not the way we hoped for, we are still thankful to have the ability and opportunity to worship you. We know that every day is a gift for you, so in these hard times, let us make every moment count. Extend your healing hands on those who are sick. Give them strength and heal them. Please bless this program and that everyone watching will be touched by you. Thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. prayer uh, for our offering I would like to welcome any, uh, everyone to um, give their 10% for those who are watching at home you can either drop it off or mail them please bow your heads for prayer father in heaven thank you for all that you have given us most of which are more than what we truly deserve as we return the 10% to you Bless the money so that it may go to where you intend for it to go. Let the money be used for your great works. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Shall we pray for the Lamb's offering? Please bow your heads. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. May you please bless the children's offering. The little ones have so much to learn about you, so please go send the money to where it needs to go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Sabbath. Today I will be doing the children's story and so I hope that the children at home can all learn something from this. Today for the children's story, I want to talk about dreams and goals. For the kids, many of them know what they already want. Many of you want to be a doctor. Another wants to be a firefighter. 
or become a famous athlete or celebrity. And someone else may want to be fashion designers. And when I was little, I wanted to help the sick. But some of you may not know what you want to be. And that's okay, because the most important thing that you have to remember is that God has an important plan for you. Each and every one of you has a will that God wants. In the Bible, it gives us many examples, such as Moses, David. Ever since they were little, God had a big plan for them. They didn't know, but God did. God protected them and guided them throughout their lives. Now, we are very small in this world, but we have to remember that God is bigger than anyone and anything in this world. And remember that we all have a Heavenly Father above us, so we shouldn't be afraid to make big dreams or goals. Pray and talk to Him, and He will let you know, and He will show you the right path. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for all the children who are able to hear the children's story. They have big dreams and wishes that they want to accomplish in the future, and you know what they want. Help them to be obedient to their parents and listen. But most importantly, we pray that the children will grow up in your words so that they may be able to live according to your will. Amen. So we, we all know what's going on with this um, COVID-19 stuff. And a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home, like we should, you know, stay home. Um, but there's a lot of misconception and doubt in the world that wondering why is this happening to us? And if God is so big and powerful like everybody says he is, why is all these terrible things happening to us and why are people we love leaving us and dying just like that? What's the reasoning behind it? And is there really a way out? And really we need to know that there is a way out. You just have to believe. So that's why today I'll be singing, uh, Yes, God is Real, and then a Life is a Ball Game. There are some things I may not know There are some places that I cannot go But I am sure of this one thing that God is real For I can feel Him in my soul Yes, God is real Real in my soul He has washed and made me whole Yes, God is real Real in my soul Yes, God is real For I can feel him in my soul life is a ball game being played each day life is a ball game everybody can play yes you know Jesus standing at the home plate he's waiting for you there oh you know life is a ball game and you've got to play it fair the first base is temptation you know the second base is sin third base tribulations if you pass you can make it in yes son solomon is the umpire and satan's pitching the game oh you know life is a ball game but you've got to play it fair thank you happy sabbath good to see everybody
this afternoon. I'm going to be reading John chapter 2 from verse 13 to 16. And the Jew, and the Jew Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made his scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Jesus said, make not my father's house the house of merchandise. Jesus went to the temple and he saw people doing business, money changer, doing business and changing different kind of things, selling things in the house of God. And he said, my house is not a house to sell things. It's not a house for merchandise, but a house of prayer for our nation. That happened 2,000 years ago. But up to now, in many churches all over the world, not just America, they've changed the house of God into a house of merchandise. I think we have to go back to the basics and start preaching what Jesus died for and start talking to people about salvation. They need to have a good relationship with God. I remember many years ago when somebody invited me to an Adventist church. I was really surprised. I was not, not, not really too surprised. The focus was on the Bible and closer relationship with God. In many churches, it's not like that. In many churches nowadays, the focus now is on money, is on selling commodities. I call this gospel of black market fundamentalism or gospel of free market fundamentalism where anybody can just come to church and just start selling things. That's not the reason for the gospel. The gospel is about salvation. For God so loved the world that sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but everlasting life. It is crucial that we go back to the basics. I believe that God, God has chosen Adventist Church as one of the ministry to help preach the truth for this end time. Because God has not changed with that holiness. Nobody can see God. God has not changed. We can only have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. There are not thousands of ways to get to God. There is only one way. And Jesus is the only way to God. And the cross is the place of glory. I think the time has come to come back to the feet of the cross. The gospel that's been preached in many places nowadays is the gospel of candy. Blessing, blessing, blessing. But life is not full of candy. At times we're going to eat candy or ice cream. But at times we're going to deal with the real stuff. There are times that everything in our life is going to be shaken. And the only thing we can actually hold on to is the word of God. And the word of God has not changed. The word of God is the product. It's not the product of time. It's the product of eternity. God speaks all the time. And when God speaks, the word of God has to come to pass. Because the word of God cannot fall to the ground. Jesus is still the only way to God. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. So for the scripture uh, that I chose for today is um, Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. It reads, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall fall and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. In uh, verse 28, uh, basically just reminds you of how powerful God is. Uh, he doesn't stumble, and he is always everlasting. The other three verses um, tells you how is is a promise that God gives to us, uh, that he will always give us the strength, to keep moving on. And as time goes on, uh, it says, even the youth shall faint and grow weary. But we that wait upon the Lord, uh, he will continue to give us the strength and we will be able to run.
Happy Sabbath. Today I will be reading from the back of the hymn. It is a uh, inspire. It is seven ninety six. Hope and comfort. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Stop being anxious and watchful, for I am I am your God. I give you strength. I bring you help. I uphold you with my victorious right hand. The eye of Yahweh is on those who fear him, on those who rely on his love, to rescue their soul from death and keep them from a life in famine. It is by faith and through Jesus that we have entered this state of grace in which we can boost about looking forward to God's glory, but but that is not all we can boost about. We can boost about our suffering. This suffering brings patience, as we know, and patience brings perseverance, perseverance, and perseverance brings hope, and this hope is not deception, deceptive because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit which has been given us. May the, may the God of hope bring you such joy and peace in your faith that the power of the Holy Spirit will remove all bound to hope. Happy Sabbath, church. So I'm going to share a reading that I felt was fruitful. Have you ever heard of a midlife crisis? So apparently, there is also a thing known as the quarter life crisis. The term quarter life crisis describes the specific anxiety of facing the realities of adult life. Typically, QLC starts in one's 20s or late teens and on up to mid-30s, even the early 40s. Though it ebbs and flows, QLC peaks around 27 years of age and lasts about 11 months. It consists of lacking a sense of direction and involves one's quality of life and purpose. A person experiencing a QLC has general anxiety over his or her finances, relationships, and career. Some questions spark QLC immediately. What am I going to major in? How will I pay my loans? Who will I marry? Where should I live? How many kids should I have? And these are just basic life decisions. A plethora of other decisions need to be made on a daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal basis. So not only do decisions about one's life need to be made, but also social decisions that affect the lives of others. The decisions made in one's 20s affect the quality and even quantity of the rest of one's life. In other words, the effects of the decisions made during the quarter life period compound in one's senior's years. They are not isolated to one stage of life. Rather, they reverberate through the decades, with some only coming to full fruition years later. While living life without regrets is a noble ambition, figuring out, figuring out how to live without them is another story. When living fully in the moment, we often forget about living the fullest lifetime for eternity. We want to say no regrets in our 20s as well as in our 90s. How can we live this kind of life? In the Bible, God reveals the best light on life. The Bible addresses life's greatest questions, regardless of generation, but regardful of the human condition. May the Lord bless as you study, contemplate, apply, and live the principles of knowing God's will. Someone needed to hear that today. And I know that touches a lot of people's lives, mine especially. 
So if you're struggling with direction, just ask the Lord for guidance. Study his word. He has so many examples in the good book. Basic instructions before you leave her. Amen. Happy Sabbath. I'll be singing uh, Worth Fighting For. You met me deep in my despair to show me you were never really there. You claimed because I was made for so much more. I am your child. And I'm worth fighting for, though heavy. With the weight of my mistakes, you carried me. And refused to let me sink under the pressure. You meant for me to soar, I am your child. And I'm worth fighting for, eyes have been seen, ears have been heard. All oh, you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more still worth fighting for Now I'm moving By faith and not by sight and Towards victory By the power of your might You straightened out my path and opened every door I am your child And I'm worth fighting for Eyes haven't seen Ears haven't heard All you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more Still worth fighting for Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard All you have planned for me And nothing can separate me from your love When there's so much more still worth fighting for And that's why I'm pressing towards the mark Because the calling on my life is worth fighting for and i'll keep my mind stayed on you jesus because the peace it brings is worth fighting for and i'll be faithful to my family's name because the pride it brings is worth fighting for though this world is not my home but your kingdom here is worth fighting for thank you thank you it's been a rich blessing this morning being here and hearing all, hearing you pour your heart out to God and enjoying the music. God has blessed. We've been blessed. We as the people of the church have been blessed. And God's blessings are, are going on, extending today, and they'll be there tomorrow and next week and next month. God is with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. And I thank him for blessing us this morning and being with us. Let's start with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we are here this morning to look at your word and to draw closer to you. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light to our path. In it, Father, we are led and guided into a walk of faith with you. And you lead us and you guide us all the way. And I thank you, Father, for doing that for us so we can find our way, 
know where we are and stand tall. And I pray this morning that you'll bless us, that we open the word of God, you will guide and direct our hearts and our minds, that we, Father, may be thankful, praise you, glorify you in all things. To you be the glory and to you be the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture, the Bible, holds up Jesus Christ as our example in everything, in every way. The Bible says he's lifted up, all men will be drawn to him. And he draws us in, in, in many, many, many ways. He draws us onto salvation, but he draws us into relationship with him. And through that relationship, we find and come into salvation, his salvation he provides for us. And all that he did, everything he said, every act he performed, he brought glory and praise to his Father in heaven. Because he knows well humanity, us, and all our failings, Jesus remained connected to his Father at all times through continual, ongoing prayer. Scripture says that he found favor in the sight of men and in the sight of God his Father. He never forgot the omnipotent hand of power that worked within him through his entire life and especially throughout his ministry. And in all things, in everything he did, he gave praise and thanks to his Father in heaven. He was faithful in doing that. And we ought to be as well. We've been through much. We've seen much in this world in the last few months, and beginning in March and in and April and moving on to May. We've seen much turmoil, much fear. But in all this, in all this chaos that we've seen, we've seen God's sure hand leading and guiding us individually, leading and guiding our nation. Are there mistakes? Yes. Are there problems? Yes. But our God is bigger than all those problems. And no matter what may come, no matter what may turn up, we need to look to him because it's from him that our strength and our assurance comes. Not from man, not from this world, not from people. It's from him and him alone. In all things, give praise and glory to him. And the title of our sermon this morning is Worthy to be Praised. And our God is worthy to be praised. He alone is God. I want to read our opening scripture for you. It's found in Psalms 96, verses 1 through 4. O sing to the Lord, to Yehovah, a new song. Sing to Yehovah, Yehovah, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Repeatedly, again and again and again. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord, Yehovah, is great and greatly to be praised. He is worthy of our praise. No matter what the situation, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter what we've done, he is worthy of our praise. And greatly to be praised. He is to be feared, reverenced above all that mankind may call or refer to as God. He alone is God. There is none other. As we praise him, our praise is lift up to heaven. The song that we sing here. And Albert does a great job singing it. As our prayers are lifted up, our praise lifts up to God. His blessings come down. And his blessings come down upon us whether we are faithful or not. The more faithful we are, the more sure he is. 
the more solid we stand in Him, in His salvation, in His eternal life. Someone once wrote, the melody of praise is the atmosphere of heaven. I thought that was, that was very nicely worded. The melody of praise is the atmosphere of heaven. When you read through the book of Revelation and other, other books, you see the heavenly beings continually falling at their knees, giving praise and glory to God, exalting His name above every name. There is none like Him. They continually praise Him because He is worthy of praise. He deserves praise because He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Creator. And for that reason alone, we owe Him praise and glory and honor and majesty. The melody of praise is the atmosphere of heaven. And when heaven comes in touch with this earth, there is music and song, thanksgiving, and voice, the voice of melody. And I hear in these songs this morning, and whenever we sing praises to our God, it draws us ever closer to Him because praises lift up our hearts. We give the praise and it draws our hearts into His heart. We become one with Him in relationship, locked in to the relationship with Him. Psalms 100, verse 1. You're familiar with this. It says, Make a joyful sound to the Lord, all you lands, the earth, everyone. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His presence with singing. Come into His presence with singing. Have a song on your heart. Praise on your lips. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, that Yehovah, He is God. It is He who made us. He's our Creator and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates, into His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His wonderful, glorious name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures forever to all generations. This morning, as we enter into worship with our hearts filled with thanksgiving, and I pray that everyone's heart is filled with thanksgiving this morning, because no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, there is something that you can be thankful for and thank Him and praise Him. Someone once said, behind every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. There's always something. There are times you may have to search, seek after what is a blessing, but it is there. That's our God. That's who He is. With everything, He brings the blessing. In the midst of trial, think about the worst trials you ever had. If you look long and hard enough, you can find something to praise Him in that. I said this before, I always wonder about scriptures that talk about counting it all joy when you encounter various trials. How do you count it all joy when you encounter various trials? And I found myself at different times coming to thank God for the trials he allowed in my life because I found a silver lining. I found a reason to give him praise and glory and adoration. It's a, it's a frame of mind. It's what we choose to do. And it is good and right to do so. We enter into his worship with our hearts filled with thanksgiving and enter the courts of his presence with praise on our lips. For he alone is God and there is no other. He alone. Psalms 35 says, With my mouth shall I speak of your righteousness. God alone is righteous. 
Jesus said there is none but God, none good but God. And that is correct. There is none good. Isaiah says, you all, your righteous are as filthy rags. There is none good but one. And that's our Lord, our God, our Savior. With my mouth shall I speak of your righteousness and your praises all the day long. The writer of Psalms got it right. The book of Psalms, fairly large book, a lot of beautiful Psalms in it. It's filled with verses of praise and adoration to our God. Verses of glory to the one true God. And such as the Psalm 145, which we'll take a look at. It's a beautiful psalm, a song of God's majesty and God's love. Follow with me as we read through this, this psalm. I think you'll find it very interesting. Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol you, I will exalt you, my Lord and my God. O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever, world without end. He had a heart after the heart of God. And he said, I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day. How often? Every day I will bless you, Yehovah, and I will praise your name forever and ever. He repeats that again. Great is Yehovah, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is un searchable and it is our minds are finite we have limitations many limitations god is infinite he goes on forever and so does his mercy and his grace and his greatness it's unsearchable no one can know it someone wrote gratitude is a state of mind and it is and flows from a heart of love. Gratitude flows from a heart of love. The question is, do we have a heart of love? As we see the psalmist here, do we love him, our Lord and our God, who created all things with the same passion with which he loved us? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting love. That's a deep, sacrificial love. A tremendously deep love. Agape love in the Greek. Do we love him with that depth of love. And that's what relationship's all about, coming to know our Lord, coming to understand His ways, to be changed into His image, transformed, renewed, and changed from the sinners that we find ourselves to be into the righteousness of God, all by faith. And of Jesus, it says, of Jesus, it's Jesus who says, greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for a friend. Jesus called you and I friends. You're not slaves. You're not servants. You are my friends, sons and daughters of God. And he said, greater love has no man than this, that you lay down your life for your friends or your brother. And that's exactly what Jesus did. God emptied heaven, sacrificed the thing that meant the most to him, his son, sacrificed that, allowed him to come. And Jesus, Jesus poured out everything for us. He gave his life to the point of death. Talk about a great love. 
And we're called to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. That's the love God wants us to have for him. And if we're open, if our hearts are open to him, he'll work with us, in us, to bring about that type of love because you and I are not capable of showing that kind of love. But he is able to come in and work in us and through us to affect that love in us. Praise and glory be to our God. And for the sacrifice of Jesus, for his willingness to give of himself, for me, for us, we all ought to be and are and ought to be eternally grateful. And praise God that our God has a love that we can aspire to but don't now have, share, or live in this world. But by his grace, we can come to the place where we do experience that and grow in that. He alone, Yehovah alone, Jesus alone, is worthy of praise for he is the creator. He has life. No one else has life. And the one who had life created life and sustains life in this world and the heavenly realm with the angelic host. Our lives continue because he is life and he is gracious and merciful and full of bounty. And he keeps on giving. Even to those who turn their back on them, him, even those who hate him, disown him, he still loves them. He still loves us. Praise God for that. He alone, he is creator, and he is worthy of our praises. Verse 4 reads, One generation shall praise your works to another. We, sharing the love of God, telling others, and praising his holy name. That's beautiful. And they shall declare your mighty acts. Goes on in verse 5, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. And it's amazing when we look at the works of God. I was driving the other day and looking at the world, and you know, even the ugly places have an innate beauty in them. And yet this is a beautiful creation, beautiful world. And you think what's happened to it over the last 6,000 years, you wonder how God could sustain this, but he has. There's so much beauty here. The birds, the animal, the, the animal life, it's amazing. A little hummingbird the other day came up while my wife was out on the front porch having prayer and, 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 and study and blessed her day like nothing I've seen. It's amazing how God can take his created creatures and bring such blessings to his people. But he does. Men shall speak of your might, of your awesome acts. And the Bible is filled with awesome act after awesome act. And I will declare your greatness, O oh Lord. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. What a beautiful song of praise. What a beautiful psalm of glory to God. Verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, and he is. He's mindful of us. Why, I don't know, but he's mindful of us. He cares for us. He provides for us. He does all these things, and yet we are all in rebellion. And he continues to bless us, continues to give us these things. He is slow to anger and great in mercy. And his mercy is unreal. Yehovah is good to all, and he is all good to all. 
It's from Him that every good and every perfect gift proceed. They come from Him, from His hand. And His tender mercies over all His works, all His creation, everything has His stamp, His fingerprints on it. Verse 10, all, you, all your works shall praise you. It's an interesting Jesus when he was on that Sunday, Palm Sunday they call it, when he rode the donkey down into Jerusalem and the Pharisees confronted him. He said, you hear what they're saying, what they're saying to you? They're praising you, do you hear this? And Jesus says, if they do not, God will call the rocks to sing praises. Amen. Amen. God is awesome. All your work shall praise you, Lord. And your saints shall bless you. When's the last time you asked a blessing upon God or just blessed his holy name? When's the last time you did that? When we come into relation with somebody, we treat them differently than we do everybody else and everything else in our life. Relationships are special. And relationship with God ought to be special, more special than any other relationship. We ought to go out of our way to do these things. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. And Psalm 16, 3, it says, As for the saints who are in the earth, and that's you all, that's everyone sitting here, everyone out there who will, be, who will, will see this. And for the saints who are on the earth, these are the excellent, the New American Standard said, these are the majestic ones. God speaking here. These are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight, says Yahovah. You are the apple of the star. You are his delight. He delights in each one of you. When we turn to him, away from the world, away from our sin, when we trust in him, seek after him, continually go to him and invite him into our problems, our situations, our circumstances, our jobs, our decisions that we make every day. When we invite him in, that brings praise and glory to our God. It's not just our speech, it's our actions. Actions do speak louder than words. The Bible tells us again and again, don't be a hearer, be a doer of the word. And act and give God the glory and the praise and the honor. Invite him in. Let him bring glory into your life because in blessing you, he brings glory to his holy name. As for the saints who are on the earth, you all are the majestic ones in who is all his delight. The saints upon the earth shall testify of your faithfulness and your goodness. Verse 11 reads, they the saints, they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. Who else but God's people, those in tune with him, who love him, who revealed his will, his understanding to them, who else would know the glories of the kingdom? No one. Jesus, I tell you these things, everything the Father has shown me, I've given to you. And he's given it to us. Praise and glory be to God because we are his sons and his daughters. You shall speak of the glory, we shall speak of the glory of his, God's glorious kingdom, and talk of your power. To make known to the sons of men, our brothers and our sisters in this world, full of brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, most of whom don't know God or anything about him. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts. And in telling others of his mighty acts, we're giving glory and praise to our God. 
and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. And have you noticed that the dominion he's talking about here is timeless? We know dominions, kings come and go, nations come and go. That's what we normally think about when we think about dominion and kingdoms, but his dominion is timeless, transcends time, as does God. Throughout all generations, these things will be known. Verse 14, the Lord upholds all who fall. Have you fallen recently, lately? Have you lost it? Have you gone where you ought not have? Done what you knew, knew better than to do? I have good news for you. Yehovah upholds all, all who fall. None are exempt if they'll turn to him. None. Yehovah upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down with heavy burdens of life. Those who are bowed down. You bow down today. This world can cause us to bow down under the weight that it puts on our backs. Jesus says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who are labor heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light, he says. Why? Because he's in it with us. It's not us doing the doing, it's him. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. He identified the Christ that I'm, it's no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus who lives in me and through me. He will carry our loads and our burdens. The power of the triune God will work in our behalf to bring about our salvation and make our loads light and lighten them. Verse 15, the eyes of all looked expectantly to you, O Lord, for everything, and you give them their food in this due season, the animal kingdom as well as us. He provides everything for all of us. It's all a gift from God. We read in Ephesians, Now to him, to God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. And what power works in us, his people? The power of Almighty God, the Holy Spirit. Paul said that the Holy Spirit who raised him from the dead will live in us and raise us up and put life in these dead bodies. It's the power of God that will do all these things for us. We're not on our own. He is with us. And we owe him praise and glory and honor. And our conversation should be full of praise and glory to him continuously. And it would be if we understood and really believed what it is he has done for us and is doing for us now. Verse 16, you open your hands, O Lord, and satisfy the desire of every living thing, every need, every creature, every person has, God takes care of. The Lord, Yehovah, is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. goes on to, what about God's faithfulness to those who seek him? What about us? We're seeking after God. We're calling for him, asking him to come into our lives. What about us? Samuel, 2 Samuel says, I will call upon Yehovah, the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I 
be saved. Saved by his mighty hand. Not your own doing, not your own strength, not your own might. Be saved by him. He alone is able. He alone has the power. He alone is life. He will save us. I will call upon Yahovah, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved, calling on the name of Yahovah. It's when you call on him that he comes in. Jesus said in Revelation 3, I stand at the door and knock. We are calling if we're knocking. And he said, if you knock, I will open the door and I will come in and we'll commune, we'll eat together. I'll bring the food, said Jesus. We'll share a meal, a spiritual meal, and grow you. Verse 18 says, the Lord, Jehovah, is near all who call upon him. And the Bible says that repeated again and again and again. It's interesting Call upon my name, he says. And there are those who are afraid to use the name of Jesus, use the name of God. The Jews believe it's too holy to, to, to say the name of God, yet the Bible says again and again through Scripture, call upon my name in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Call upon my name. There is power in that name. One of our members, Brian, did a sermon the names of God or the power in the name of God. And it was awesome. We need to call on that name because there's power in that name. God knows his name. Do we know his name? We ought to. But Lord, it's a description. It's a title. It's not a name. The Bible been changed to replace the name with the with Yehovah or replace Yehovah with the Lord or God in caps but it's not his name. His name is Yehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah, however you choose to say it. That's his name. Call upon that name, he says. The Lord is near those who call upon him to all who call him in truth. We need to call on him in truth. That's important. True to his word. True to his re revelation of himself to us. True to him. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. Do you love him? Do you fear him? He'll satisfy your desire. He will also bear, hear their cry, and save them. You want to be saved? It's in the bag. Call upon him. Trust in him. Fall on the rock, and you'll be saved. Yehovah perseveres, preserves all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. All those who draw close to him, he draws close. Those who separate from him, he forced to separate himself from them as well. So they'll be lost. My mouth shall speak the praises of Yehovah my God, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever and ever. God is so good. In every situation, there's praise to be given to our God. I think of Joseph, who was brother sold into slavery. It looks like he spent about 20 years in Potiphar's house and in prison, or longer. Did he have much to thank God about? Praise God for. But his heart was with God. And in that relationship with God, he found much, much to give praise and thanksgiving to his God for. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to Yehovah, all the earth. Sing to Yehovah, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. If you know God, you are saved. There are those who don't. Day by day, 
tell others of his goodness, his love, his mercy. Praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. For the Lord, Jehovah, is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared, reverenced above every god, all gods. And Paul talks about idols, greed, and lust, and all the list goes on and on. We think of idols as the thing that they st stood up and they played it with gold or silver and worshipped. No, an idol is something, anything that separates you from your God. Your music, your job, relationship you may be in. Anything and everything can come between you and your God if you allow it. God says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, relationship with Him, oneness with Him, and all these other things I will give unto you. Get your priorities right. Give me your first allegiance. The entire book of the Psalms confirms what was written in Psalm 22, verse 3. Scripture is speaking to the Holy One of Israel, speaking of the Holy One of Israel. It reads us, For you are holy, Yahovah, enthroned in the praises of Israel. And who is Israel? Israel is God's people. If you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, near the according to the promise. You are holy. You are enthroned in the praises of your people, now and then. Is Israel, is Jehovah enthroned in your praises this morning? Does your heart overflow with a sense of gratitude for all that God has done for you? The plan of salvation he's worked out for us and says, here it is, accept me and live. The sacrifice of his beloved son, God making that sacrifice. Do you praise him? Do your praises to him fall from your lips as honey from a honeycomb? Is it natural or is it forced? Gratitude comes from a thankful heart. We have much to be thankful for. Our God has given us the world. He's given us life. We are in death. We chose death. We deserve death. That's our reality. But Jesus came that we who are dead might come back into life in him. And that alone should be enough to overwhelm us with praise and glory to him. And I pray, it's my prayer that each one of you will come to a place in your relationship with him where those praises, that thanksgiving will be spontaneous and flow naturally, as natural as honey dripping from a cone. Bow our heads, heads with me if you would. Gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for the gifts that you've given to mankind, gifts that we are not worthy of, but that you still provide. And I praise and give glory that you do provide these gifts for us, Father. And we ask that you would touch everyone here and who's hearing the message, that you would bless them you give them a spirit of thankfulness, of gratitude, of praise to you, their Lord and Creator. And help them, Father, to walk, not according to the world, not according to the flesh, but according to your good and glorious and your revealed will to us. We thank you, Father. We praise you. We glory in you and ask your blessing. In Jesus' holy name, amen. To come up, we'll have uh, our closing song. We will sing Redeemed.
many verses are we doing? One, two? Do the two verses. Let's do the first and last verse. What a blessing. Let's have our benediction. Gracious Father, we are your saints upon the earth, the majestic ones in whom you delight. And because of your son Jesus, we are redeemed among men of this world. And we thank you and praise you, Father. May our hearts be filled with joy, with Pray this to you, exalting you, lifting up your name every moment of every day. And may we know that you are with us. May we believe that and walk in that. May we have hearts of gratitude, filled with joy, filled with peace. Because you are our God. And there is none other. You sustain us. You provide for us. You keep us. And you, Father are our life. You are the way and the truth. And we thank you and praise you and give glory to you today, tomorrow, and forever. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.